made the right compound. Any questions about the lab this week? Any questions about uh, material recovered thus far from last time? Okay, alkene reactions. Uh, we have our green outline, yum. I believe we made it through Roman numeral one. Uh, we're ready to begin with Roman numeral two, addition of water. We also have our schematic. And we saw how to make alkyl halides from alkenes, adding HX, yeah, intermediate, carbocation intermediate. Uh, now let's make alcohol. Hydration of alkenes. Very common reaction of alkenes. Uh, alkenes do not react with pure water. No reaction. The skin of an apple contains many alkenes, and the skin of the apple protects the inside of the apple from the rain, okay, while uh, hanging on the tree. Alkenes don't react with water. But what about acid rain? Acid rain can cause problems. Now, the alkenes will react with water if we have an acid catalyst, okay? H plus catalyst. We can get a reaction, and ultimately water will add to the alkene. So if we take this formula, we now have an alcohol. Yeah, there's the oxygen. And we now have H2O added to the formula. When you add H2O, that's called a hydration reaction. All right, so we've hydrated the alkene. You see the H2O? Here's the O. Here's one H, because it's on the O we show it. Where's the other H? On the end carbon, right? Okay. Two there, only one here. So you see the H2O that's now in the structure? Um, note the regiochemistry. The OH is going to end up with a tertiary carbon. And we've already said why. So you've got to see the consistencies in these reactions. The mechanism is the same, except the nucleophile, instead of being a halide, is going to be water. All right? Consistencies. All right, uh, how can the acid be shown? Well, this could just be shown as H3O plus, because isn't that water in H plus? So it may be shown like that, acidic water. What are, what are types of H plus catalysts? It can be sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, HF, less common, but HF. Not other HXs, now that is an HX, but you don't want to use HBr or HCl here. Because if you do, you'll get the reaction we saw last time, from number one. And if you want that reaction, then you can do that. But you don't, if you want this reaction, you don't want to use HBr or HCl. Now, HF will not give the previous reaction. So you can actually use that as a strong acid here. Now, that, that was probably the only official strong acid, but these are strong enough to serve as acid catalysts. Usually when you have H plus catalyst, it's going to be some type of strong acid. But it doesn't have to be one of the seven from Genkin. Because HF is still a pretty strong acid. I don't think phosphoric acid is less known than Genkin. Maybe it is. Is phosphoric acid considered a strong acid? Yes. Yes. It is? Okay. Maybe it is. It's not as strong as sulfuric. Okay, mechanism for this hydration of an alkene to give an alcohol. Well, just like previous reaction, the alkene attacks the H plus, in this case, catalyst. All right, is, is it going to break away from that carbon? Basically the same question. Here's a consistent question. Where do you want to leave carbocation, left or right? On the left, right? Why? Tertiary. Well, this tertiary, all right? 
And so the pi bond breaks away from that carbon over there and goes and makes bond to H. New bond to H. Here it is. There's the bond we just made. Leaving this carbon over here as a plus because it, it lost the pi bond. It's only got three bonds now. Okay? If we did this way and broke away this way, we'd make a primary carbocation. We don't want to do that, do we? Okay? Tertiary carbocation. That's consistent with previous reaction. Next, what can happen? Something attacks carbocation. It's called a nucleophile because it likes the positive charge. A positive file, what we call a nucleophile. Water is the nucleophile here. In the previous reaction, it was like Br minus. Here it's water. And so these electrons make bond to carbocation. We just made that bond there, and I'll highlight bonds that way sometimes. Two electron covalent bond. Those two electrons used to be a lone pair. Now the lone pair made a bond. And that's as simple as just bam, it makes bond. Okay? Oxygen only has one lone pair. Remain. Positive charge, right? We learned how to do positive charge week one. Things are typically going to go neutral to get a final product. Majority of the time, 99% of the time. How can this go neutral? This can actually serve as an acid and something takes the H and leaves the electrons behind. We'll talk about that. But if these electrons move on to oxygen as a second lone pair, well now that's a standard oxygen, neutral oxygen. And there you go, that's a standard alcohol. What takes the H? Well, is there a minus on the board that can take the H? It doesn't have to be a minus. Right here, because this was sulfuric acid, I showed it ionic. All right, and that's okay to start with. You've got to be careful here. This is no good. This is no good. Because if you read the mechanism page, it talks about you don't want to use condensed structures and mechanisms. We want to draw this out. This is the bisulfate anion. What does it look like? We got oxygen, sulfur, double bonded, OH. If there was another H there, that'd be sulfuric acid. There you go. And why am I showing this like this? Because, like we said on the very first handout, the very first page of the first handout, whenever you show a charged atom, please always show full, complete structure, including all lone pairs. Okay? That includes in lab reports. That includes any time. Please. We got lone pairs all over the place. But I wanted to specifically show them here because they have a charged atom. I want to be very clear about it there. Right. That's my recommendation for helping you stay out of trouble. This anion, though, these electrons can go back bond to A. This is just an acid-base reaction. This is acting as a base. Take the H. They stay here. What does that give? It gives that. But what are we reforming here when this takes an H? It's short so We're reforming our acid catalyst, sulfuric acid. That fits the definition of catalyst. We reform the H plus. Now, I will always use the conjugate base of my acid. You could also use water. Because sulfuric acid is an aqueous acid. And how does sulfuric acid exist in water? This really exists how? Okay, you're m mostly right, but H plus is really not a real thing. H3O plus, yes. Sulfuric acid is really this, right? It can 
even be more ionized, but it will at least ionize once, okay? That's how sulfuric acid exists. If you say, give me some sulfuric acid, you're going to have a bottle of those ions. It's fully ionized. That's the definition of strong acid, okay? Well, guess what? If I use water to take the H, I would form what? H3O plus, and this thing would just remain as is. And there you go. H3O plus and the other thing just remains as is. That's strictly more correct. My preference, though, is to actually use the conjugate base of the strong acid. So I actually reform H2SO4. Because if this is discussed, somebody's going to say, H2SO4 is the catalyst. Sulfuric acid is the catalyst. Yes, it is. And I feel like doing it my way is less confusing. That's why I, adopt it. I do it my way. I, I do what I think is going to be best for you in the longer run. Okay. But understand here, you can use water. It's actually more correct to form this as the, at the end. And guess what? There, there's your H3O plus again, which we said was a catalyst, right? Right? There it is. So the acid can be shown many ways. Uh, how many intermediates in this mechanism? Carbocation. We said all these have carbocation. But that's also an intermediate. Right? It's a discrete structure. It's formed along the way. It exists at some point during the conversion between the alkene and the alcohol. All right? So if you did a reaction coordinate diagram, you would include this, which is more stable. Which is least stable? Which would be the highest? What's the rate determining step here? We've got one, two, we've got three steps. Um, reaction of the alkene with H plus, that's first step. Water attacking carbocation, that's next step. Something taking the H, that's the third step. Which is the rate determining step? Yeah, typically, all these reactions forming your carbocation is the rate determining step. Okay? And then from there, we'll be going downhill. Real quick here, okay. Uh, reaction progress, some type of energy. We go here. All right. A, B, C, D, yeah. So from B to C, how, how do we go? It's a smaller... C is more stable. Why? Carbon does not have an octet here. No octet. Here, everything has an octet, even the oxygen. And typically, that's why. Now, C is still charged. I'd probably put it up something like this. And then D. How does D compare to A? Why? How does D compared to A? It's more stable. Right. There's no pi bonds. A. What did we, you get out your calculator? What did we break? We broke a pi bond. What did we form? We formed two six bonds. Bond. So it's going to be stronger, lower in energy. Yes. Uh, so that would be down in here. And so at this point, you've fallen downhill. Doesn't take much to go down. Doesn't take much to go down. What's your rate determining step? Forming the high ener highest energy carbocation. Yeah? This is the same as we did before, except we got one more intermediate because when the nucleophile adds, see if this was Br minus adding, that would just give. That you'd have a neutral product because that's a minus and everything becomes neutral. Here a neutral is adding and you end up with a plus. You have to lose an H to go neutral, so it requires another step. I 
I'm not always going to ask for questions, but you can tell when I'm moving on. And when I'm moving on, that's the time to say, hey, hold up, right? Got a question there. Reversibility of reactions. A common reaction uh, is reverse of this. That is, to take an alcohol and to remove water. And you got to see that. Going from here to here, this molecule loses water, loses H2O. And that's called a what? Not a hydration, yeah, but a dehydration. And it's the exact opposite mechanism. And it's catalyzed again by acid. The acid catalyzed dehydration of an alcohol is a very common reaction. But we'll actually cover that during test three. Okay? But I don't like to do things in isolation and then get over there and say, hey, okay? Because all of it sort of fits together. And if you start thinking about it now, when we get over the test three, you go, yeah, it's just the opposite of what we did over there. Okay? And again, Converting one comp type of compound to another, that's a lot of what organic chemistry is about, particularly when you're doing reactions. Alkenes can be converted to alcohols. And guess what? Alcohols can be converted right back to alkenes. So is acid rain a problem? Well, the skin of the apple doesn't react with just pure water. But what if the water starts becoming acidic? Yeah. Then you're going to start getting reaction. Well, the acids, the H plus. See, the alkene will react with the H plus. It's got something to react with. There's just not enough reactivity here. That is, what does the catalyst do? It lowers transition state. Yeah. See, this is reacting with H+. Plus. If you reacted with just water, it would, it would be like, okay, I can't jump that high. Keep going, keep going, all the way up to the moon, and then here. And see, it just won't happen. The activation energy is too high. But with H+, plus, it's easier. Just because you got more reactivity. That comes from something else. It starts getting into physics. Uh, more charges, more charge attraction, you just got greater reactivity. Uh, okay, predict the product, first one there. We can also go back to previous uh, page where we were doing synthesis. Somebody got a product for the first one here? Where do you want to make cation at, left or right? Left, left tertiary carbon. Left. It would be left, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be tertiary. Secondary. It would be a secondary, okay? So you, if, if you're unclear, you should draw out both, car both potential carbocations, okay? Does it react like this to make HO in here leaving that cation? Or does it react like this to make H over here and leave that cation? Okay? Which way is it going? All right, that's a question. It's going to make carbocation here. What attacks carbocation in this reaction? Water. There's no halide here. And after water attacks, then we lose an H from that oxygen. We've seen the mechanism. What's the product here? An alcohol then? Product. You should go through the mechanism on your own. Same as above. You should go through it so you see it, practice it, understand it. It's very basic, very fundamental. And if you spend 30 minutes on trying to understand it, you have not wasted a second of your time. Alright? If you want to do well in organic chemistry. Alright? Basic fundamental mechanisms. Okay? And if you want to do well in organic too, you learn mechanisms. Okay? So you know how to do anything. What would be the stereochemistry here? Let's see. What does water attack? Doesn't water attack the carbocation? I mean, right up there. It's a different molecule. Doesn't water attack the carbocation? Yes. 
How do you attack the carbocation? In terms of steric chemistry, direction. How do you how do you attack? What outcomes would you get? Did you read about that this weekend? Do what? Either side? Yes. Yeah. Very good. Is that right, everybody? How did you know that? What, was it discussed up here, number one? Yeah. How does a nucleophile attack a carbocation? What outcomes do you get? The new bond is either going to be forward or back. Yeah? Okay. Why is it? What's the ratio there? Okay. Why is it <coughs> forward or back? Here we go. What's, it, what's the hybridization of a carbocation? What's, what's the geometry of this carbon here? There's one H there. SP2 geometry. Planar, yes. Planar's the key thing. Planar like a piece of paper. There's your carbocation. Okay? It's flat on the board. It's planar. Let's move the board out here. Here we go. Nucleophiles swimming around. Okay? All around. Ooh, physics. I got some electrons. Right? Water. Electrons. Electrons like positive. Here we go. Bam. How does it attack it? Here we go. You either attack here. I'll do this. If I attack here, the new bond is which way? Towards you or away? Towards you. Towards you, obviously. What if I attack here? Which, which way is the new bond? It's away. Here we go, this way. It's either going to bond here, and it'll be that way, or it'll bond here, and it'll be that way. What's the ratio? You got all these gazillions of molecules. 50 50. All right? That's one or two sig figs. That ain't like 20 sig figs. So what does 50 mean? Okay. Maybe it means 49.5%. Okay. It's 50-50. Because when you got a gazillion, like flipping a coin a gazillion times, you're going to get 50% heads and 50% tails. Okay. There you go. That's why you get... So this would be racemic, and I'll do it like that. And I think it's discussed, yeah, discussed on the green page, which I said was hugely important. Yeah. Everybody just got all that stereochemistry yet? Okay. I know many of you did not. But I have 100% faith that if you go and sit down and look at it and, and read, you're going to get it because you all can do any of this. It's just a matter of doing it. Question? Um, I was wondering, could you show this the uh, second intermediate for the uh, for this uh, the, the one that we just did? I mean, it's, it's just like that. It's no different from that other than the, other than the carbon backbone. It's just a different number of carbons. I prefer that you show it and you can show me to confirm. But it's, okay. Yeah. So with the, con with, the, with the conjugate base of the thing attacking the intermediate be OH minus or H2O? No, there's no OH minus on the board. So it would just be you can't have hydroxide under acidic conditions. Oh, okay. This is acidic conditions, right? Right. No hydroxide. So it would. So H2O would attack the um, hydrogen. H2O attacks the carbocation. Um, I'm talking about after you have the carbocation. Right, right here. H2O attacks carbocation. 
Right, but you know how you said the uh, the conjugate base in the acid, then there's the acid base, base mechanism? Uh -huh. So would the acid, uh, would the thing that's doing that be H2O? Well, we, we discussed that, right? Right. We either used bisulfate, mm -hmm. but in parentheses I said, or use H2O as the base. I showed H2O. What's, what's the confusion? Um, it's just that this time we're not using uh, sulfuric acid. We're using H uh, hydronium down here as the catalyst. Okay. Uh, now I'm getting more clear. Remember, there's a many ways to show acid. Okay. There's got to be a minus here. It's impossible not to have a minus. So if you want to, if you want to, if that helps you. Good question, because H3O plus is used very generically. You cannot go to the stock room though and say, give me some H3O plus. The first, you're going to be like, you mean sulfur acid? Okay, so you got you got to have it. But yes, down here if you want to use water because nothing else is really shown explicitly, then use water. Guess what? You'll actually be more correct because regressive water is actually more correct. Yeah. But not hydroxide, because hydroxide does not exist under acidic conditions. Everybody learned that in, I would say gen chem, but I would say third grade. Okay? Hydroxide doesn't exist, in, I, don't know, I don't care what you learned in gen chem 2 about any autoionization. Okay? If you, if you want to start using hydroxide under acidic conditions, you're going to have many issues and many problems. It's like reaching into your cooler of cold water and saying, I'm going to find some hot water. There ain't no hot water in a cooler of cold water. Right? Uh, you can try the next one. The next one does not have water. Instead, it has ethanol. How would that change? It wouldn't change anything. You'll just be left with something else. Try that on your own. It's the same mechanism. Okay? Dry. One thing about HF is it can be a dry acid, where sulfuric is a wet acid. Okay? If you don't want any water, HF is an option. There are other options that are better than HF. HF is kind of odd. I just use it because it's analogous to ACL, HPR. Okay? Uh, let's go back over here, synthesis. Anybody have a synthesis of this compound? Well, at this point, we know it's some alkene because we're doing alkene reactions. Alkene reacting with ACL. So I agree. Well, what alkene? Anybody have an alkene? Can you name your alkene? One methyl cyclohexane. Uh huh. I like that name. Uh. Cyclohexene, but you said one methyl? Yes. Well, let's put a methyl then. You can either go here or here. Either way, it's one methyl. Um, well, I'm going to turn it so it'll look more analogous. There's cyclohexene. Let's put a methyl here. Yeah. Back that with HCl. Yeah. Where are you going to make cation at, left or right? Left, left. Left, correct. And then what attacks carbocation? H plus hydronium? No, what attacks carbocation to get that product? CO minus. CO minus. Okay, yeah. Mechanism would be good. Or, or are you going to make cation over here? No, that'd be secondary. You need to, if you're not clear here, you need to show both carbocations. And you need to understand that tertiary carbocation is more stable than the secondary carbocation. And the more stable one is going to be formed. Because this transition state leading to it is going to be lower. And then the Cl minus attacks. Yes. There you go. Is there another alkene that would give this product? There actually is. Anybody else got it? How about if we put the double bond up to the other to that carbon? Carbon carbon double bond, that's a carbon, yeah. 
That would get the same product too. Select Regio Slice Blade. Where are you going to make cat iron, top or bottom? Bottom. It's actually the, the same carbocation. Both of those reactions involve the same intermediate. If I see that? Comes over here, this attacks H plus, leaving cation there. Here, it attacks H plus, leaving cation in the same place. Just new H here or new H there. The same here. Ah, we can do this. Which reaction will be fastest? They both form the same product. Which one will occur at a faster rate? Which one will occur at a faster rate? Uh, that one there. And we kind of have uh, skipped a little bit. I wish I would have did it in the Alkene video. Nomenclature video. We need to, uh, in the nomenclature handout, physical properties. Substituents. And usually when you say this, you're talking about carbon substituents. 
four carbons bond to the alkene. Everybody agree? Here's the alkene. How many carbons bind to it? Only one. It's a longer chain, but it really doesn't matter. Monosubstituted, disubstituted, trisubstituted, tetrasubstituted. Otherwise, they are isomers. And let's compare isomers to keep it sort of on an even plane to it. This one's more stable, it's more substituted, is what we say. More substituted with carbons. The alkene is more substituted with carbons. All right? Uh, so that one would be most stable, yeah, this one. Which would have the lowest HF? What does that mean? The heat of formation. Uh, which one would have the lowest HF? On the right. Uh, what is lowest HF? It, it takes the least amount of energy to create it, right? Uh-huh. So it would be the one on the right, the most stable one? Uh-huh. Yeah. Lowest HF is the most stable. You've got to understand what, what the question is asking. Because most HF, it, most HFs are negative exothermic. Lowest would be most exothermic. Like what's the lower number, negative 10 or negative 50? Negative 50. That's a lower number. You gotta kind of get that straight. The more stable compounds gonna have the lowest HF. Which gives off the most heat when burned? The the least stable. The least stable. Mm -hmm. Most heat is energy. Which which gives off the most energy when burned? The one that contains the most energy. Which one contains the most energy? The most stable or the least stable? The least stable. Least stable. Right? Dynamite gives off a lot of energy when it burns or explodes because it's a very unstable molecule. It's a very high energy, thus unstable molecule. So you've got to get understand what the question is asking. All right? I mean, if you wanted to heat your home by burning one of these, if they were something that you could burn, which one would you want to heat your uh, home with? Assuming they all cost the same amount per, per liter or something. The first one. The, first the one, one that gave you the most energy would burn. Okay, you get more bang for your buck. That'd be the, the least thing. All right. So these are questions to ask. Okay. Uh, the one above is the same as below. This, which one's more stable? They're isomers. Which one's more stable? Left one. Disubstituted. More stable than monosubstituted. Okay. Up top, which one is more polar? Right. Are those different or are those just conformers? Those are two different compounds up here. Why? Because the pi bond can't rotate. The chlorines are trans, they're cis. Two different compounds. Nomenclature video. Okay. Different physical properties. What's the relationship between those two? Just good friends or what? Stereo they have the same name if you name them, if you know the The difference is how they're projected. Okay, you got to get stereo and constitutional straight. They're different compounds. Which one's most polar? The right one. Right. Right. Uh -huh. Most polar because you've got two dipoles. And so you have one molecular dipole moment like that. These two cancel. Polar, nonpolar. Which one's most soluble in water? The right one. Polar one. Now it's probably not that soluble. But if you were going to say relatively, it would be the most. Okay. It's probably not. There, there's no hydrogen bonding potential there. It's just hydrocarbon and helium. Uh, which would have the highest boiling point? The right one. Right. Polar one, right? Since it's polar, it's got a sticky end and a non-sticky end, or a positive and a negative, and those, those ends can start sticking together. And so the molecules can start sticking to each other. And if you want to boil it, you've got to break the molecules apart. So the polarity gives it stickiness, right? Plus and minus. Which one's most stable? The left. 
chlorine sort of anti or trans or anti? It goes back to rotation. These can't rotate, but what if they could? Would it be like green and blue like that or like this? Anti, right? Again, if you can rotate, we call that conformers. If you can't, they're different compounds. And they're stuck that way. And it's best to be stuck trans, the two chlorines opposite. You put the two chlorines the same side, these are electrons. And they start sort of, I don't like. OK? So the types of questions you can answer, but the understanding that these are different. But the important thing there is stability. Back over here, which is going to be faster? Which is more stable? Which star material is more stable? Yeah, more stable. So you did a reaction coordinate diagram. We got A and B. And they go into C, which is more stable, A or B? A, B, and they both go into C, right? And then they go to product, but here's C. Here we go. Bam. At some point, these become the same. At some point, A and B become C. At some point along the transition state, they become the same thing. Which is going to get to C quicker, A, a or B? A, less activation. Who says A? You're climbing a mountain. Here's the top of the mountain. Who's going to get to the top of the mountain easier? A or B? A, because A is almost already there. Okay? Does this make perfect sense? A is going to get there easy. Here's the bigger thing. If you can show a reaction coordinate diagram and make everything very straightforward, the answer can become obvious. Okay? If I agree with this? Okay, where are we at? Um, next, next time, carbocation rearrangement, green expansion, and synthesis of uh, y'all familiar with marijuana? THC? No. Okay. There's the synthesis of uh, THC, the uh, active component of uh, marijuana. Okay. Mechanism. Okay, guys, we'll be moving ahead.